if everything went right. In the eight years we've been after him, we've never been able to charge him with anything that would stick. Then why put it? The casting process for the 1967 TV series Ironside was a careful selection of talents to bring life to the crime drama. Raymond Burr was an obvious choice for the lead role, having already gained fame for his portrayal of Perry Mason. The producers wanted a strong actor to play the disabled detective, and Burr's proven skills made him a perfect fit. For the role of E. Whitfield, the producers sought a talented newcomer who could bring freshness to the show. Barbara Anderson, with her striking looks and acting abilities, was chosen in her. She proved to be a valuable addition to the cast, and her chemistry with Burr added depth to their professional relationship on screen. Don Galloway, who played Detective Ed Brown, was selected for his solid acting background and ability to portray the right balance of toughness and sensitivity. His character's relationship with Burr's character, Robert T. Ironside, provided a mentor-mentee dynamic that enriched the series. The role of Officer Frank Gallagher was given to Don Mitchell, who brought a unique blend of strength, intelligence, and warmth to the character. Mitchell's chemistry with the rest of the cast, particularly Burr, contributed to the show's success. Elizabeth Bohr, who played Officer Eve Whitfield's replacement, Officer Barbara Anderson, was chosen for her ability to handle both the dramatic and comedic aspects of the role. Her character added a new dimension to the show, and her interactions with the other characters brought a fresh dynamic. In summary, the casting of Ironside was a careful process of selecting talented actors who could bring depth, chemistry, and dynamic interactions to the series. Each actor's unique abilities and contributions helped make Ironside a success in the world of TV crime dramas. Diane, I accept. The 1967 TV series Ironside was directed with a clear vision to portray the challenges and triumphs of a detective in a wheelchair. The director drew inspiration from real life stories and aimed to present a character who, despite physical limitations, was sharp and capable. The style was straightforward, focusing on the lead character's intellect and determination. The director worked closely with the actors, encouraging them to bring depth to their roles and with the crew to create a setting that was both realistic and supportive of the story's needs. This collaboration resulted in a show that was both engaging and respectful of its subject matter, offering viewers a new perspective on determination and intelligence. The series stood out for its time as it explored themes of accessibility and inclusion long before these became common topics in media. The director's approach ensured that the story was told with sincerity and respect making it a memorable and influential piece of television history. She worked. We both worked all the time. On the side, we had a nice three. Ironside was a groundbreaking TV series that first aired in 1967. It starred Raymond Burr as Robert T. Ironside, a detective who uses a wheelchair after being shot in the line of duty. The show was known for its innovative camera work and unique perspective often filming scenes from Ironside's point of view in his wheelchair. Perhaps you have a personal story about how Ironside has inspired or impacted your life. Maybe you were inspired by Ironside's determination and resilience, or perhaps you appreciated the show's realistic portrayal of disability. Throughout its run, Ironside tackled many important social issues, including discrimination, addiction, and mental health. The show was both ahead of its time and a product of its time, reflecting the cultural attitudes and values of the late 1960s. But there are many funny, shocking, and sad facts about Ironside that you might not know. For example, did you know that Raymond Burr was actually taller than his co-star Don Galloway, who played Ironside's partner? The production team used camera tricks to make it appear as though Burr was shorter. Or how about the fact that Ironside's iconic wheelchair was custom made for the show and cost a whopping 12000 to build? That's equivalent to over 90,000 today. And did you know that Ironside was originally conceived as a movie, but was eventually turned into a TV series after the pilot film received poor reviews? The show went on to become a huge success, airing for eight seasons and spawning several spin-offs. Do you have a cherished memory or personal experience related to Ironside? We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Whether you were a fan of the show when it first aired or discovered it later on, Ironside has left a lasting impact on generations of viewers. I've been following your efforts, sir, uh, on behalf of Frank Tomachek. The, letter the 
The production of the 1967 TV series Ironside is an interesting study in television history. The set design was a crucial aspect, with the central feature being the custom-built apartment for the main character, Robert Ironside, inside a San Francisco police headquarters. This unique concept required careful planning and execution to ensure a seamless blend of living space and office environment. Filming locations were primarily in San Francisco, adding to the show's authenticity. However, logistical challenges arose due to the city's hilly terrain and traffic, often necessitating creative solutions, such as using a specially equipped van for the lead character who uses a wheelchair. In terms of innovative techniques, Ironside was one of the first shows to regularly use handheld cameras, providing a more dynamic and intimate feel to the footage. The series also made notable efforts to accurately portray police procedures and forensic science, contributing to its enduring popularity. Despite the production's complexities, the crew managed to produce a compelling drama that resonated with audiences. What time did you see her, do you recall? Yes, it was 10.52. How do you happen to remember the exact time? I lived in San Francisco from 1964 to 1980 and have fond memories of the city. The TV show Ironside, which aired from 1967 to 1975, was a hit during my time there. The series follows the investigations of a special police unit led by Chief Detective Robert T. Ironside, who is wheelchair-bound after being shot in the line of duty. The show shots of San Francisco were always interesting to me, especially the scenes of Mark Sanger driving around the city. The production team would cut to a studio set when the characters exited the van, and I often wondered how they made the old Hall of Justice look like it was still standing on Montgomery Street when it had been torn down by the start of the series. One of the show's strengths was the development of its characters. Mark Sanger, played by Don Galloway, underwent significant character growth, evolving from an uneducated street punk to a cop and then an attorney over the years. Barbara Anderson, who played Officer Eve Whitfield, won an Emmy for her work on the series. The guest star list for Ironside is also impressive, featuring many character actors who appeared in various TV shows and movies from the 1950s to the 1980s. Richard Anderson, Michael Conrad, and Jack Sue are just a few of the notable actors who made appearances on the show. Ironside was an exciting and engaging show, and I find that there is little on TV today that captures my attention the way this series did. The show's ability to weave together complex investigations with character development and strong performances made it a standout in its time, and it remains a memorable part of television history. The creation of the musical score and soundtrack for the 1967 TV series Ironside was a collaborative effort between composers Quincy Jones and Jerry Fielding. The music they created complemented the narrative and emotional tone of the series, which followed the life of a detective, Robert T. Ironside, who continued his work despite being confined to a wheelchair after being shot. Quincy Jones, a renowned composer and musician, was responsible for the series' main title theme. The theme, with its bold and dramatic brass section, set the stage for the intense and action-packed episodes that followed. Jones' use of jazz elements in the score, which was popular during the time, added a layer of complexity and depth that enhanced the show's narrative. On the other hand, Jerry Fielding, who composed the music for the series' later seasons, brought a different style to the table. Fielding's music was more traditional and orchestral, which provided a stark contrast to Jones' jazz-infused score. However, Fielding's compositions were equally effective in conveying the emotional tone of the series, particularly during the show's intense and dramatic moments. The musicians involved in the creation of the Ironside score and soundtrack also played a crucial role in its success. The use of a full orchestra as well as talented jazz musicians allowed for a wide range of musical styles and tones to be incorporated into the series. The result was a rich, and varied score that perfectly complemented the narrative and emotional tone of Ironside. In conclusion, the musical score and soundtrack of Ironside were essential elements in the series' success. The collaborative efforts of Quincy Jones and Jerry Fielding, as well as the talented musicians involved, resulted in a score that perfectly complemented the narrative and emotional tone of the show. The music, with its bold brass sections, jazz elements, and orchestral arrangements, added a layer of complexity and depth that enhanced the show's overall impact. It's excellent, doesn't it? 
Two of the five are out of town. Atkins is in Paris on a fellow. Raymond Burr, known for his role in Ironside, continued to work in television movies despite his kidney cancer diagnosis. He refused surgery to ensure he could star in The Return of Ironside and Perry Mason The Case of the Killer Kiss, both released in 1993. In Ironside, Burr played a hero who uses a wheelchair, which is ironic as he had previously portrayed a villain fighting a wheelchair-bound hero in Rear Window. His character's disability did not limit his ability to solve cases and help those in need. The series was abruptly canceled by NBC in 1975, leaving three episodes unaired. The Organizer, The Rolling Y, and A Matter of Life or Death were eventually shown in syndication. The decision to cancel the show was unexpected and left fans wanting more. Please, I mean try. I get the chance, huh? The three of you have been on a desert island for a whole year. One of the most iconic scenes in Ironside, a 1967 TV series, is in the pilot episode when Detective Robert T. Ironside becomes paralyzed from the waist down. The scene is powerful, with tight close-ups of Ironside's face, showing his shock and despair. The cinematography is stark, with a plain white background that highlights the emotional drama. Raymond Burr's performance is exceptional, conveying Ironside's raw emotions as he comes to terms with his new disability. Burr's ability to express complex feelings with just a look made Ironside a compelling character. The director, James Goldstone, uses a slow motion effect to heighten the tension, and the sound of Ironside's heavy breathing fills the silence, making the scene even more intense. The impact of this scene on the audience is significant. It sets the tone for the entire series, highlighting the challenges Ironside faces as a disabled detective. The scene is a testament to the show's willingness to tackle difficult subjects and to portray disability in a realistic and respectful way. According to Burr, the scene was challenging to film, but he felt it was essential to accurately depict Ironside's experience. He said in an interview, it was a tough scene to shoot, but it was important to show the reality of Ironside's situation. I wanted to make sure we did it right. Another iconic scene is in the episode No Way Out when Ironside and his team are trapped in a burning building. The scene is shot in real time, with a camera following Ironside and his team as they navigate the smoke-filled halls. The cinematography is gritty and raw, with handheld camera work that adds to the sense of urgency. The performance of the entire cast is excellent, with each actor bringing their own unique energy to the scene. Don Galloway, who plays Detective Ed Brown, shows his character's bravery and determination as he helps Ironside escape the burning building. The impact of this scene on the audience is visceral. The sense of danger is palpable, and the audience can't help but feel invested in Ironside and his team's safety. The scene is a testament to the show's ability to create tension and excitement even in the most dire circumstances. Director Don Wise uses a variety of camera angles and techniques to keep the scene engaging. He also uses sound design to heighten the tension with the sound of the fire crackling and popping in the background. Overall, the iconic scenes in Ironside are powerful examples of excellent direction, performance, and cinematography. They showcase the show's willingness to tackle difficult subjects and its ability to create tension and excitement. The impact of these scenes on the audience is significant, making Ironside a classic TV series that continues to resonate with viewers today. Anyone in commercial auto theft? I'm sure we can find someone. Why? I know we've come up dry at the mid-cities. The theme music of the 1967 TV series Ironside was composed by Quincy Jones, marking one of his first major assignments, which contributed to his now legendary status. The show also featured three cast members from Perry Mason, Barbara Hale, Wesley Lau, and Richard Anderson. As of 2021, Elizabeth Bohr's death on September 30, 2017, has left Barbara Anderson as the only surviving cast member of Ironside. How do you do? Hello? Well? You're not going to believe it. Are we on an invest... Ironside, a 1967 TV series, made a significant cultural and social impact. The show featured a detective, Robert T. Ironside, who uses a wheelchair challenging stereotypes and presenting disability in a new light. Audiences were drawn to this groundbreaking representation, making it one of the top-rated shows of the time. Ironside influenced pop culture by showcasing a main character with a disability who was still capable and competent. This portrayal broke away from the common narrative of disability being a hindrance. 
The series also contributed to discussions on relevant social themes, such as accessibility and inclusion, which were not commonly addressed in media at the time. The show's resonance with audiences went beyond entertainment, inspiring people to reconsider their perceptions of disability. It marked a shift in the cultural landscape, encouraging greater representation and inclusivity in media. The legacy of Ironside continues to be felt today as it set a precedent for more nuanced and diverse portrayals of disability in television and film, etc. Not one business has been bought or sold in the past six months. Now, Raymond Burr, the lead actor in Ironside, faced challenges due to eye strain from constantly looking upwards in his wheelchair. And a nod to the show, the 1960s series Get Smart featured a spoof of Ironside with a wheelchair-bound cow's agent named Leadside, portrayed by Ronald Mullen. In the Ironside pilot, Burr's hand injury was genuine. He had hurt the first two fingers of his right hand after falling when shot. That's good. You uh, want something to eat? Ironside, a groundbreaking 1967 TV series, received positive critical reception and impressive audience reactions. The show, starring Raymond Burr as a detective in a wheelchair, was praised for its innovative portrayal of disability. The New York Times hailed it as a notably adventurous series, highlighting its bold storytelling. Audiences appreciated the show's fresh take on the crime genre, with many lauding Burr's performance. Ironside earned several award nominations, including four Emmy nods for Outstanding Drama Series. Raymond Burr himself received six Emmy nominations for his lead role, winning once in 1969. These accolades underscore the show's quality and influence, validating the hard work of everyone involved. The series also earned two Golden Globe nominations for Best TV Show and Best Actor in a TV Drama for Burr. Winning the Golden Globe for Best Actor in 1968, Burr's victory further solidified Ironside's status as a high-quality series. These awards and nominations mean a great deal for those involved in Ironside. They represent industry recognition of the show's achievements and the team's dedication to creating compelling television. The accolades also highlight the importance of inclusive storytelling and the impact it can have on audiences. By featuring a disabled lead, Ironside helped pave the way for more diverse representation in media. Money. Somehow I haven't been able to look at a typewriter since. Oh, not that she hasn't. Barbara Anderson, a notable cast member, departed from Ironside after the 1970-1971 season due to a contract dispute. Early in his career, Stephen Bochco, who later became a successful television producer, contributed to the series. He was hired by executive producer Frank Price to add extra scenes to the first six episodes, which were initially too short. However, this arrangement led to a strained relationship between Bochco and Price, continuing even when Price oversaw Universal Television and Bochco was a writer there. The show's lead actor, Raymond Burr, is best known for his starring roles in both Perry Mason and Ironside, making a significant impact on television audiences during the 1950s and 1960s. Any luck with my fan mail? Not yet, and don't expect any. The filming of Ironside, a groundbreaking 1967 TV series, was filled with memorable moments and anecdotes. Raymond Burr, who played the lead role of Robert T. Ironside, was known for his professionalism and kindness on set. Despite being confined to a wheelchair due to his character's disability, Burr insisted on performing all his stunts himself, demonstrating his dedication to the role. Barbara Anderson, who played the role of Officer Eve Whitfield, was initially rejected for the part due to her youthful appearance. However, she was eventually cast after Burr personally advocated for her, recognizing her talent. Their on-screen chemistry became a highlight of the series. The show's creators faced challenges in designing Ironside's wheelchair. They wanted a unique and functional design that would stand out on screen. After numerous prototypes, they settled on a custom-made chair with elevated wheels, which became an iconic symbol of the series. Behind the scenes, the crew often had to deal with logistical issues due to Burr's wheelchair. Elevators and ramps had to be installed in the studio, and shooting locations had to be carefully selected to accommodate the actor's needs. Despite these challenges, the cast and crew maintained a positive and collaborative atmosphere throughout the production. The series also broke new ground in its depiction of disability. 
Ironside was one of the first TV shows to portray a character with a disability in a leading role, challenging stereotypes, and paving the way for more inclusive representation in media. The show's impact resonated with audiences, making it a lasting success. Not likely. You'll be on the case, and so will your date with all his extrapolations. Raymond Burr, who played the lead role in Ironside, faced significant physical challenges due to his character's wheelchair usage. The extended time spent in the wheelchair caused great stress on his body, adding to the difficulties of his demanding role. Dana Winter made two appearances on Ironside, playing distinct characters in each episode. Interestingly, she later portrayed Ironside's wife in the 1993 TV movie. Her versatility was on display as she skillfully tackled different roles in the series. Paul Winfield, an accomplished actor known for his debut in Perry Mason's final season, also appeared in Ironside. His three episodes showcased his talent and further solidified his place in the television industry. His contributions to Ironside added depth and intrigue to the series. Goodbye, Mr. Ironside. There's nothing more that we can say to each other. Ironside, the 1967 TV series, holds a significant place in film history as it revolutionized the portrayal of disability in media. The show's lead, Robert T. Ironside, played by Raymond Burr, is a detective who uses a wheelchair after a shooting incident, which was a rare representation of disability in mainstream media at the time. Ironside's influence on future filmmaking is evident in the way it paved the way for more inclusive and diverse representations of disability in media. The series challenged ableist stereotypes and showed that individuals with disabilities could be active and productive members of society, including in positions of power and authority. The series also inspired subsequent works in various media. For instance, NBC rebooted Ironside in 2013, and the character of Ironside has been referenced or parodied in several other TV shows and films such as The Simpsons and Family Guy. Additionally, the series' groundbreaking representation of disability has influenced other media portrayals of disability, such as in the popular TV series Speechless and the film The Sessions. Overall, Ironside's legacy and influence lie in its pioneering representation of disability and its impact on future filmmaking and media portrayals of disability. The series showed that inclusive and diverse representations of disability are not only possible but also valuable and important in media. There are no kids playing in this game, and that includes your brother. See you around sometime, huh? If you feel tired, Georgie, sit down. Robert Ironside, the main character of the TV series, can be seen in the early episodes driving around in a modified 1944 V8 one-ton police van, which was replaced in the second season with a Ford Econoline van. Ironside, played by Raymond Burr, uses a wheelchair due to his disability from being shot in the line of duty. In the first season, he is seen using both a powered and manual wheelchair interchangeably. The character's first name, Robert, is the same as Burr's longtime partner and producer of the show, Robert Benavides. You're a loyal wife, Mr. Kupan. You'd help protect your husband when he's wrongly accused. Would you cover up? Ed's journey to becoming a police officer began in the Marines. During his time on the show Ironside, a young character named Mark underwent significant professional development starting as a bodyguard and eventually becoming a full-fledged police officer, attorney, and ultimately a judge. The series also took a toll on Raymond Burr's health as working in a wheelchair and under hot lights caused his eyes to become slightly burned. Despite these challenges, the show remained a significant part of television history. You're on the street or something. Take uh, this one here. The owner's a broker. In the world of television, certain episodes can lead to new beginnings. This was the case with two episodes that served as launching points for Sarge and Amy Prentice, though these series were short-lived. The show's initial introduction to audiences was through a two-hour TV movie, which was a common strategy for series launches during that period. This movie was well-received and marked a successful start on NBC. Additionally, the main character's office set holds its own story, originally being part of Alfred Hitchcock's Marnie. Later, this set became an attraction, allowing visitors to walk through the very space that once played a key role in a classic film. And the victim? He might be a victim with an accomplice. What about the other members of the team, Chief? Forget about anyone who was not at my last lecture. 
in the groundbreaking TV series Ironside, which first aired in 1967. The main character, Robert T. Ironside, is a detective who uses a wheelchair due to a bullet wound. This portrayal was a significant departure from previous representations of disability on television, which often focused on the person's disability rather than their abilities. Sadly, during the filming of the show, actor Raymond Burr, who played Ironside, received devastating news. His close friend and frequent co-star, actress Natalie Wood, had drowned in a boating accident. Burr was deeply affected by her death and took time off from filming to grieve. Ironside was notable for its diverse cast, including Don Galloway, who played Officer Ed Brown, and Barbara Anderson, who played Officer Eve Whitfield. Anderson won an Emmy for her performance in the show's second season, becoming the first African-American actress to win an Emmy for a dramatic role. Tragically, Anderson's character was written out of the show after the third season due to budget cuts. Fans were disappointed by her departure, and the show's ratings began to decline. Ironside ultimately aired for eight seasons before ending in 1975. Despite its controversial ending, Ironside remains an important milestone in television history. Its portrayal of disability and diversity challenged societal norms and paved the way for more inclusive representation in future TV shows. Let me know if you find a ham and cheese on rye. If Ironside, the groundbreaking 1967 TV series, left an impression on you, we'd love to hear your stories. Share your memories and experiences related to this classic show. Did it inspire you, change your perspective on television, or influence your taste in cinema? We invite you to like, share, and subscribe to join us in exploring more cinematic treasures. Your engagement helps us create a welcoming community for all to enjoy and discuss their favorite shows and movies. Let's celebrate the legacy of Ironside together. We can't wait to see your comments and engage in warm conversations about this iconic series. See you there. Like a hundred bucks back, you want that much action, don't you? No thanks, I didn't come here to play. Cash out.